Clark woke up to a bright morning in his small beach house in Markham, Washington. He laid in bed for some time, staring at the picture of his wife on his nightstand. Another day without you, Grace. Clark sighed as he got out of bed. He didn't even bother drawing the curtains. What was for breakfast? Clark cracked open an old can of beans. Disgusting. He groaned after swallowing down a few spoons straight from the can. It had been nearly a year since Clark had been living this dull life, but it hadn't always been like this. Clark was a well-to-do, happy-go-lucky man. He had a good job, he used to live in a nice loft with his wife, Grace, back in Bellevue. Things were going well in his life. Until Grace fell severely ill with influenza. Though many recovered from the illness, Grace's condition only worsened and Clark was helplessly heartbroken, unable to do anything for her. After she passed away, Clark fell into depression. He felt like all his happiness had suddenly disappeared from his life. Some months afterward, Clark left his job, their apartment, and moved to this coastal town of Markham where he started to live this life of loneliness. With the savings he had, he spent a portion on buying this rundown beach house and a fishing boat. He barely managed to cook and had been living on stale food for months now. Clark didn't care for anything anymore. The only question he pondered on was when his time would come as well. Clark usually spent his time out at sea. He took his boat out fishing, and oftentimes when he pulled in a good catch, like a yellowfin tuna or a wild Pacific salmon, he sold it in the market in town. However, he rarely spoke to anyone, and with whatever money he made, along with the rest of his savings, it was good enough to suffice him for the years to come. Clark put on his hat and headed out to the beach shore, where he had docked his boat. As he neared the waters, he looked at the small clusters of islands that spread across the area, just perhaps an hour's distance away. They were all unoccupied chunks of land and jungle. It was quite early, so not a lot of people were here yet, However, even by the time it would be sunset, the beach shore would once again be deserted. There were lots of rumors and superstitions that went on in the local town. A few men came to fish here, but no one dared to venture out too far. Apparently, after some men had gone missing and others washed up on shore in horrible conditions, families stopped coming to the beach believing something lurked in the waters. Even the women in town were not allowed to stay on the beach past sunset. Of course, Clark didn't care about the rumors, nor the imposed rules and regulations. It was nothing but ridiculous to him. He would spend nearly the whole day out at sea, and if he happened to get stuck in bad weather, he'd let himself soak in the water till the skies cleared up and he went back home. Clark steered his boat away from the dock and out in the deep blue Pacific. The weather was relaxing today, Unlike other extremely hot days, the skies were cloudy. By the time it was afternoon, Clark caught three mackerel fish. He called it a day and packed up his fishing gear. However, when the wind picked up, Clark decided to sail out a bit further and enjoy the weather before he turned to go back home. Help! Help! Clark suddenly heard a faint cry. He scanned the ocean around him and barely spotted something moving on one of the small islands up ahead. We're here! Here! Help! Clark steered the boat in the direction of the island. He was quite surprised to see a young woman waving her hands at him frantically as he pulled the boat up on shore. He furrowed his brows and rather harshly scoffed. What are you doing here? How did you reach here? Mister, you don't know how happy we are to see you. My cousin and I got stranded here when we were out sailing. There is our boat. It got tipped over by something in the water. It's been damaged and we've been unable to fix it. We've been here for three days. What were you doing sailing out so far? Aren't you women restricted from coming to the beach after sunset? The young woman suddenly fell quiet. A tear dropped down her cheek. We know, mister. 
We got stuck in the bad weather. The waves pulled us in this direction. It was a horrible night. We... we lost all our men. Please help us. You can return to town with me. Where is your cousin? Her name is Meryl, and I'm Marissa. She went to gather some food. We haven't eaten much in the past two days except for some coconuts and clams we gathered. Hmm, Clark said, turning back to his boat. Where, where are you going? Marissa asked, concerned. Without saying anything, Clark took out the fish he caught and gave it to Marissa. You can prepare this and have it before we leave. I don't want any of you women getting seasick on my boat. Thank you, mister. You've been awfully kind to us. We don't know what we would have done if you hadn't spotted us. Clark handed the girl a matchbox from his pocket and sternly said, Quick, we should set sail before it's dark. Mister, why don't you come with me? I'll take you to our shelter. Perhaps you can rest there while we prepare food. Clark followed the young woman down the beach shore far towards the jungle. They had made a small hut with sticks and leaves. Some empty coconut shells and small clams lay to the side. Marissa started gathering the leaves for Clark. Mister, you can take some rest here. There's no need for that. I can sit on the sand. Clark sat down looking at the ocean waves. As Marissa prepared the fish, she started humming a distinct tune. Every now and then, she tucked her blonde locks of hair behind her ears and peered a glance at Clark. Mister, what is your name? How did you come out so far towards this island? Clark, I often sail out here to fish, Clark said, looking at his watch. Look, we don't have much time. It's six. Hurry up. Yes, of course, Marissa said, piercing the fish with a stick. She suddenly let out a yelp, holding her finger. Clark furrowed his brows, seeing a drop of blood fall to the sand. Ow! This hurts! Ow! This hurts, Clark! Didn't I tell you never to make this stuff for me? You don't even know how to cook, Grace! Don't make excuses, Clark. I know this is your favorite. You just don't want me to go through the hassle. Look what you did! You freaking almost chopped your finger off! Hold still, I have to wrap this up. These cuts can be horrible. What if you develop tetanus from this now? Tetanus? You always stress over impossible things, Clark. You should get that wrapped up. Clark, could you please help me? I can't work with one hand. Marissa ripped a portion of her skirt and handed it to Clark. Exasperated by the foolishness of this girl, Clark started tying the cloth around her finger. Your hands are quite firm. Do you work a lot? I can tell you're very strong. Marissa blushed, her cheeks red. Clark gave her a displeased look. Are you sure your cousin is going to be back anytime soon, or should I go look for her? She's coming. There she is. Clark suddenly felt a flicker of water on his face. He turned to see another young woman drenched in water. She put down her basket and brushed her wet hair back with her fingers. Meryl, this is Clark. He spotted my signal and came to our rescue. We've been trapped here for days now. You've done us a great favor, Meryl said, stooping down to her knees. She took one of the island flowers from her basket and handed it to Clark. Please, accept this as a gift from me. I don't know how to thank you enough. Clark sat up a bit irritated. You don't need to thank me. Meryl tucked the flower behind her ear and smiled. You're truly a hero to us, Clark. As she got up, her hair sprinkled water all over him again. Can you stop that? Clark bitterly said. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. Meryl said, taking her scarf off her waist and drying her hair with it. Clark shrugged, turning the other way and covered his eyes with his hat. The two women started humming and singing delightful tunes. As much as Clark was annoyed, the beautiful tunes put a smile on his face as he remembered his wife, Grace. Grace used to sing all the time, when she was painting, when she was cooking, when she was in the shower, even in the middle of the night when she couldn't sleep. Grace? 
Sorry, Clark. Did I wake you up? No. Why did you stop? Go on. I love hearing that horrible voice of yours. What? Clark? Okay, okay, I was just joking. Your voice is beautiful, Grace. Clark, why don't you have some with us? Meryl said, tapping his arm. Clark pulled his hat off his eyes. It was dark now. He checked the time on his watch, 9 p.m. I don't think we should sail out into sea so late. After what's happened, the waters scare me. It's fine. You two enjoy yourselves. We can set out tomorrow morning. No, please, don't be like that, Marissa said, placing the steaming fish inside one of the coconut bowls and handing it to Clark. Clark was hesitant at first, but then he finally let out a smile and took the bowl. Finally, a smile on those lips. We were getting worried seeing you cranky. I hope we haven't been trouble to you. No, don't worry about it. After the three finished their meal, Marissa and Meryl laid down the leaves on the ground. Clark, you can sleep here for the night. Thank you, you two women have been very caring. You've actually reminded me of someone I used to know. Oh, are you married or are you single? My wife passed away two years ago, Clark said as he sat down. That's so sad, you must be very lonely. That's no problem, we can fix that, Meryl said as she sat down beside Clark. It gets cold here at night, you can take my scarf. Marissa came and sat by Clark's other side. Yes, everyone needs a friend, don't they Clark? Something's washed up on shore. What is this? See if they're breathing. Early the next morning, townsfolk from Markham gathered on the beach shore huddled around something that had washed up on shore. The men were bewildered to see a sea creature like that of nothing they had seen before. What are they? It has fangs. A tail? They're sirens. They lure men out at sea to their destruction by the sweetness of their songs and appearance. Many men have lost their lives falling into their enticing traps. Some even say sirens feast on their catch, and some say they devour their souls. But if any man is able to resist their beautiful voice and enchanting songs, it causes the sirens to die or take their own life. Clark, where are you going? Have you seen the creatures that have washed up on shore? They're saying it's a siren, sea creatures that lure men to their end. Don't go out like this, it's not safe. Where? It gets cold here at night. You can take my scarf. Yes, everyone needs a friend, don't they, Clark? I can see the loneliness in your eyes. Why don't we make that go away? Maybe we can make this night special before you take us home. Get your filthy hands off of me. What do you women think of yourselves? Shameless. No! Don't go! Clark! Don't leave us here! You have to care to fear, and I don't care. My heart has grown hard. It's not easy to break a man like me. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.